Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Randy and this video is a contest entry for Rich Strickler, who the channel is fairly new to me, uh, but I've seen some other people uh, doing this contest. And it's kind of a cool contest in that he wants us to show 12 albums that you would take to a desert island with the stipulation that one of them has to be a Beatles album and one of them has to be a Rolling Stones album. And he wants it to be from the classic, what he considers the classic rock era from 1964 to 1989. And he would also like that your video be under 10 minutes. So I might as well get started here. First of all, I might like to say that I don't necessarily think these are my 12 favorite albums of all time because I might have a few other genres in there. But I just kept the rock one since they called it the rock uh, era. And, but I will say that each one of these albums is my favorite uh, album by that artist. So anyway, so he said it has to be a Beatles album. And I am picking Rubber Soul, which I also found out Shannon D, that's her favorite Beatles album. I thought maybe I was the only one. But this is the perfect period for the, of them for me and that their, their songwriting, their pop sensibilities were at their highest. And they also started to spread out and experiment a little bit before they would, you know, full on experiment. But this is the perfect period for me, Rubber Soul with the Beatles. And... My favorite Rolling Stones album is Exile on Main Street. It came out in 1972. Uh, everybody knows the story of this, the, the drunken debauchery that went on making this album, but it has a couple of my favorite Rolling Stones songs like Shine a Light and it has my favorite Rolling Stones song and Tumble and Dice, but it's a wonderful album. I don't think they ever did better than this. But the thing, also the other thing I want to say is that if you talk about the Beatles and the Stones, I think you also have to talk about the Who. And I don't know if there's a better rock record top to bottom than Who's Next by the Who, which I guess was originally going to be a rock opera called Lifehouse, a lot of the songs in here, but uh, didn't quite happen, but it did happen to have a perfect album that most of these songs you've heard on the radio and there was a reason because they're very good and also include Townsend's songwriting was at his best here and also I think uh, John Entwistle's best songs on here is My Wife but wonderful rock album Who's Next by The Who. The next album is the newest album on my list and that is The Water Boys. This is The Sea from 1985. Interesting thing about this is when I bought this in 1985, right when it came out. My brother, who does not, does not have similar tastes in music really to, to me, uh, bought it as well. So we both had this album, which is kind of, was kind of strange. And I know he bought uh, the one right after that, which is also a classic in Fisherman's Blues, but I don't think he kept up with them like I did. But uh, wonderful album called uh, Celtic Soul. They really rock out though on this album more than any of their other albums, I think. Uh, a lot of spirituality in there, but wonderful album. This is The Sea by The Water Boys. Next is The Great Pub Rocker, uh, often compared to Elvis Costello. That's Graham Parker and The Rumor with Heat Treatment. Uh, this and Howlin' Wind, I think, are his two, two best albums. Kind of imagine uh, Peter Wolf, if he had a little more venom and biting lyrics, uh, be like Graham Parker. But uh, wonderful album by Graham Parker. I know it's been trendy as of late to pick other Led Zeppelin albums besides Led Zeppelin for for the best Led Zeppelin album, but they like this was played to death. You know, you have Black Dog, Rock and Roll, uh, Stairway to Heaven, but there was a reason those were played to death because their songs are very good, and this album is great. I also got the Battle for Evermore, When the Levee Breaks. It's hard to get any better than this Led Zeppelin album for me. So I would take that. Also needed some great uh, top 40 hits, and they sure knew how to put them out. And that was, this is one of those double things, but I'm picking Cosmos Factory by Credence, who uh, 
seem to have that swamp rock thing that nobody else seemed to be able to to do as well as them and or even sound like them I, nobody else sounded like uh, uh, credence I don't think and and like I said Cosmos Factory is the one I would pick another artist I think is underappreciated and that is Warren Zevon and this is his debut album well, he also had one called Wanted Dead or Alive that he disavowed. Uh, but I think most consider this his original album or debut album. And this has some of his best songs like Mama, Couldn't Be Persuaded, Muhammad's Radio. My favorite Warren Zevon song is Desperados Under the Eaves. Uh, French Inhaler is wonderful. Poor, Poor Pitiful Me, Linda Ronset later covered. But wonderful album by Warren Zevon, the debut. And then there's my favorite album of all time. I would have to take this, and that's Van Morrison's Astro Weeks. Uh, contemplative, bests, uh, mysticism, uh, the stream of consciousness lyrics. Nobody has done it like this or since. And this is Van at his best in Astro Weeks with the uh, Astro Week song, great bass playing on that. Uh, a lot of, usually a lot of jazz musicians on this album. Madam George is one of my favorite songs of all time, but Astro Weeks, I would have to take that by Van Morrison. And the next one is Layla and Other Assorted Love Songs uh, from Derek and the Dominoes, which I think is Eric Clapton's best work. Uh, you got the twin guitar attack of Eric Clapton and Dwayne Allman. Uh, you've got uh, Jim Gordon on drums and Bobby Whitlock on piano. Um, who's, the, who's the bass player on here? Uh, can't remember his name. Carl Rattle? Carl, Carl Rattle? I'm not really sure who that is. But uh, Bobby Whitlock actually wrote several of the songs on here with Eric Clapton. And he also sings The Thorn Tree in the Garden, which is a wonderful ballad. But everybody knows Layla, one of the best rock songs ever. And Eric Clapton has never played better or sang better than on that song. Uh, I Looked Away is great, Bell Bottom Blues, uh, Nobody Knows Who, You When You're Down and Out, The Old Standard. They did great on that, that one as well. But uh, Layla, and those were sort of love songs. I would have to take that. You would also not want to skip Rock's Best Lyricist. So I would take my favorite Dylan album, Blood on the Tracks. Uh, this, I think he was at his best. Um, so if you need to think about Love Gone Wrong or have some contemplative uh, nights on the, isle, on the desert island, this would be the album to listen to right here. Bob Dylan, Blood on the Tracks. And last, but not least, Need the Boss and you need Bruce Springsteen and this is his triumph here, Born to Run. Uh, has so many great songs on here. This lifts you up. He, he always had a way of talking about the troubles in the world, but there's hope at the end of the tunnel. And Thunder Road might be, is probably my favorite Springsteen songs on here. Of course, Born to Run, Jungle Land, She's the One, uh, Teenage, or Teenage. 10th Avenue freeze out, but I think Bruce said he wanted it to be like a Roy Orbison album, a rock Roy Orbison album, but uh, comes out perfect, I think, and Born to Run. And that's my uh, 12 altogether. Uh, I'll be rocking on our desert island, and good luck to uh, Rich and his uh, work for 200 subscribers. Thank you.